How's it going guys? I am back with a video. I know I have not made a video in quite some time and I'm definitely trying to rectify that especially with the coming of TBC. With TBC coming out I am excited especially now that my paladin has a chance to shine in the near future. As many people know paladins actually get to thrive aside from being just a heal bot in the Burning Crusade. But today I'm going to be coming to talk to you about is it too late to start playing Classic WoW now? And that answer to me is a little bit complicated. It completely has to do with, well, what are your goals? So we're gonna look at the first one. The first goal could be prepping for the Burning Crusade. Uh, if you want to play the Burning Crusade, if you really loved the expansion when you were younger and you want to experience it again, then right now is a really good time to start prepping for what you want to do once TBC drops, whenever that is. Now, a few things that you would want to do to obviously get ready for TBC is get a character to level 60 and ready to start doing content as soon as TBC drops. Now, there's a few characters that you have to choose from when it comes to getting a character to 60. Now, with the limited amount of time we have, depending on how much time you're willing to invest, you might not be able to get a bunch of different characters to level 60. So I would pick and choose which ones seem most appropriate for what you want to accomplish in TBC. Now, if you want to go into TBC ready to start making a lot of gold, able to farm and maybe get your bankroll up uh, as soon as you get to 70, then I would highly recommend a druid. Get a druid to level 60 as quick as possible and make that druid an herbing and miner because you're going to need herbing and mining both in TBC and druids are the best when it comes to being gatherers. They get flight form, and if you go down and somebody does try and gank you, say on a PvP server, you have great ways to simply run away, get back to flight form, and bounce. So a druid is very, very high up on my picks. On top of that, if you get your mining and herbing to max rank before TBC drops, that's gonna allow you to start farming gold by selling materials. Now, prices are a bit in fluctuation right now simply because everybody knows that the expansion is coming. But there are still many items that are selling incredibly well. Even raid consumables, even though some of them have dropped drastically in price, like flasks. So, Druid's good if you want to, one, make money now, and two, make money later. Another really good option is obviously the Paladin, although I might be a little bit biased. But again, if you want to make money, Paladins are going to be gangbusters when it comes to TBC. This is because they are going to be the best boosters, if not the only boosters in the game. In the Burning Crusade, mages have a cap on how many mobs their blizzard can hit. So they will no longer be able to do stockades, they will no longer be able to do Maradon or Scarlet Monastery. Boosting is going to be directly under the purview of paladins. Now, of course, you're going to need a few specific items if you're going to boost effectively. Two of these items are going to be the Demon Forge Breastplate, which allows you to drain life when, when struck, and again, the Skull Flame Shield, which again lets you drain life when struck. If they keep TBC the same as they did back in the day, those items will not change and will still gain a bonus from your spell power. This combined with the fact that again, if they don't change things, Consecration does not have a limit to how many mobs that it can hit. 
meaning that we can still pull entire dungeons and clear them out ourselves. Now, again, we are hoping and going off of what f happened in the past. If they come out and they don't change those things, Paladins will definitely continue on with the boosting meta. Another uh, great option if you want to get a character to 60 and have it have viability is going to be something that is good for raids. Being a hunter or a warlock are amazing characters for farming in TBC as well as they have amazing raid damage. They are great characters to choose from. Also, with the release of uh, TBC, we are also going to have a pre-patch. So, if you want to have one of the new races leveled to 60, you will have time pre-patch to level that character up. So you can make your Draenei Shaman or your Blood Elf Paladin and begin leveling them before TBC comes out, which I highly recommend. Back when Classic first released, one of the best experiences in the game was when the game first released. Everybody was running dungeons together, everybody was farming together. It honestly felt like a community was coming together and playing the game. So, if you want to prep for TBC, I highly recommend being ready as soon as it drops. So, if this is your goal to get ready for TBC, then no, it is not too late to play Classic WoW. In fact, I would say right now, while things are very cheap and people are also getting characters ready for TBC, this is the best time to do it. Because if you hit it now, you have a chance to get multiple characters to level 60. So the next question is, is it too late to play Classic WoW if I want to experience content the way that it was 15, 16 years ago? Especially the way that leveling was done. To which I would say yes and no. Yes, you could still go through quests and level yourself, and you could experience the very different ways that you would level in retail compared to how you would level in classic. I would say very vehemently that classic is a much more difficult leveling experience for sure. I'm going to use a grenade here. If you are a warrior leveling in classic, you are going to have a much more difficult experience than leveling a warrior in retail. The only downside is that, unfortunately, the boosting meta has essentially taken over to how most people level. Meaning that well-established players like myself, who have gold, who have items, and their time is more valuable to them than it is for leveling, we are going to pay people in gold to run us through dungeons and power level us. Which means that there aren't that many people who are currently running dungeons normally. Now, that is not to say that nobody is running dungeons normally. It is just that that number is far fewer. Now, every once in a while in trade chat and world chat and looking for group, I do see people looking for Scarlet Monastery, Zulfarok, Nomargon, and a few others. So, if you keep an eye out and you're on during peak times, yeah, you can actually find normal groups running dungeons, and you can go and experience those dungeons before they were changed, and before, I don't know, they were made easier or different, like Scarlet Monastery uh, had an update and it is no longer playable in the way that it is now. So, if you want to go and enjoy the old content, the old leveling, and really see the difference between how it was and how it will, you know, how it is now, then yeah, sure, you can jump on, still experience that, what I would say is a much more difficult leveling experience. But when it comes to actually experiencing the dungeons the way that they were at launch, 
that is going to be a little bit more difficult, but not impossible. So finally, the big, uh, the big question for many is, what about raiding? Will I be able to experience raiding and see the end game content? And the answer is, yeah, you can still find guilds and pubs that are running every single raid tier. A big one is actually what are called GDKPs, a gold dragon point system. So what happens in a GDKP is everybody shows up. Normally there is a gold requirement unless you are a carry, meaning that you are somebody who is very well geared, very well experienced at these raids. If you are a buyer, it means that maybe you're a fresh 60, you haven't done very many raids, but you have gold. And what happens is for all of the loot that drops off of the boss or any boss in the raid, it then goes into a bidding system with actual gold. And when somebody wins that bid, they go and pay the either the raid master or the loot master for that item and it goes into a pot so say that what's a good iconic item say that the uh brutality blade uh drops and somebody bids 500 gold and then nobody outbids them and that's the final sale price they go to the loot master, give them 500 gold, and then they get the item. This continues through all of the bosses of the raid until you get to the end. At the end, the total sales are tabulated together, and this depends on who's running it. Sometimes a tax is taken out, normally 5%, to pay out healers, to pay out tanks, to pay out bonuses for people who do summons. It just depends on who is running it, but oftentimes a 5% cut is very normal. But for the sake of math, let's say that 40,000 gold was spent on a run, and this is not that uncommon, especially in Max Ramus. At the end of the raid, if there was 40 people in the raid and there is no tax taken out, it means that everybody who is there from the beginning to the end receives 1,000 gold at the end. Now, if you're already an established player who doesn't really need any gear, this is a wonderful way to start getting your bankroll up and prepare for TBC. But if you're a new player and you have a lot of time to sink into, say, farming, especially now that we've had the Backstreet Boys reunion tour going on for so long, many people are working from home and they have the opportunity to, well, be at their PC and maybe do a little bit of gaming during their town time. I don't recommend doing this too much or losing your job over it, but people are at home more. So if you have the time to invest into farming gold, essentially the sky is the limit to how much gear you want to buy from a GDKP. And multiple of these raids happen throughout the week. In fact, this week I did two Ankaraji uh, 40 raids I did Nax Ramus, I did BWL, and I did MC, Molten Core. And that isn't even a large amount compared to many of the people that I know. There are people that I know who do 7, 8, 9, 10 GDKPs a week. Now obviously this requires multiple level 60s, but again, if you have the time to level up a character, there's really nothing stopping you except for time. So again, if you want to see the content, the only limit is essentially how much time you're willing to invest into the game. So again, no, it is not too late to get into WoW Classic, enjoy the dungeons, enjoy the raids, and actually get geared. Now, finally, we'll talk about is your goal to get endgame gear? And again, if you're going to be joining a guild, it might be a bit difficult as a new player to start getting gear immediately, but if you get into a guild that has many established, well-geared players, it actually might be easier for you to get gear that way than from a GDKP. 
For example, when our guild goes and does Molten Core, or Blackwing Lair, or Zul Garub, or even AQ40, there is a lot of gear in there that most of us just simply don't need. In fact, some of our alts don't even need that gear. So if a new player were to come in, there is a chance you would just be handed really good items right off the bat. And frankly, there are a lot of guilds right now who are actively looking for more members. Many people have gotten kind of burnt out when it comes to raiding and are taking a break. Therefore, guilds are looking for really any kind of warm body to fill raid slots who want to continue to farm and get the best in slot gear before TVC comes out. So again, if you're active, if you're willing to invest the time, you can get pretty well geared just in a few months. It's just how much time you're willing to invest. So to kind of recap things, no matter if your goal is to get gear, to see content, or simply to prep for Burning Crusade, it is not too late to start playing Classic WoW. And in fact, like I said, depending on how you go about it, this might be the best time to get back into the game or to get into it for the first time. So I think that is pretty much covers the topic. And I think for most people, if you are on the fence about it, I hope this helped you make a decision on whether you want to start playing the game or not, or even come back to the game. Of course, if you want to ask me any questions or if you want any new player guides or advice, you can come drop by my stream. I stream every single day at 9 p.m. PST or 6 p.m. EST, and I will be more than happy to help out new players. If you decide to make a character on Fairbanks, my server, I do free boosting and stockades every single day, meaning that I can help you get from level 15 to level 30 very quickly. And I think that pretty much covers everything. I hope you come and drop by the stream. That is the Duke of Twitch.tv slash the Duke of TBC. And again, I hope I've helped you make the decision on whether to get into WoW Classic or not. And I'll see you guys either in the stream or in my next video. Later, guys.